Eight fifth grade students from Parker Middle School are going to vie for the opportunity to win homework passes for themselves, their class, and the school. I'm Dr. Matthew Bayranavon, and this is Ion Park. <laughs> I'm Anne Marie Fiore, Director of Technology and Information. And I'm Dr. Linda Hirsch, the English Language Arts Department Coordinator. Welcome to Eye on Park. This is our second show where we will be looking at the new upcoming standardized assessment called PARC. PARC stands for the Partnership for the Assessment of Readiness of College and Career. The Partnership for Assessment of Readiness for College and Career is a consortium of 18 states plus the District of Columbia and the U.S. Virgin Islands working together to develop a common set of K-12 assessments in English and math anchored in what it takes to be ready for college and careers. These new K-12 assessments will build a pathway to college and career readiness by the end of high school, mark student progress towards this goal from third grade up, and provide teachers with timely information to inform instruction and provide student support. The park assessments will be ready for states to administer during the 14-15 school year. During this episode, we'll be exposing students to sample questions and their knowledge of park. Today, we have a group of students from the Parker Middle School playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire style game, or as we like to call it, Who Wants to Be Park Proficient? Now, back to you, Dr. Matthew Bayranavon, and the Chelmsford students in our studios. Okay, let's meet all of our contestants. We have Joey, Jackie, Jake, Skyla, Mackenzie, Catherine, Jill, and Luke. And we begin with the fastest finger question to determine who's going to come up and play the game. Put these rational numbers in order from least to greatest. Three fourths, 85 hundredths, 65 percent, and one half. And now, let's see the correct answers in order. It is one half, 65 percent, three fourths, and 85 hundredths. Let's see who got the correct answer in the shortest time. It's Jackie. Congratulations, Jackie. Come on up. Let's play. Congratulations, Jackie, for being the winner to come up here and play the game. Thank you. So you're a fifth grade student at Parker Middle School, is that correct? Yep. And who are your teachers? Miss Breland and Miss Ablack. Oh, both excellent teachers. They're really good. So what's your favorite subject? I like reading and writing. Reading and writing. Well, as you know, the park assesses both the mathematics and the English language arts, which includes the reading and writing. So we're going to have both type of questions here today. So let me tell you a little bit about how the game works. There are three levels to the game. The first is you answer three questions, and if you get all three correct, you win a homework pass for yourself. Then we do another three questions. If you get all of those correct, you win a homework pass for your class. And then there's a final three questions, and if you get all of those correct, you win a homework pass for all of Parker Middle School. Now, Jackie, some of these questions are difficult, so you have a few lifelines to help you out. You can use a 50-50 for a multiple choice question. If any of the questions are difficult, it will narrow it down from four choices to two. You also have the ability to ask the audience, where you give a chance to survey the entire group of kids here to see if they can help you with it. And also we have the text a friend, where we'll be able to bring up one of your friends up here to help you with the questions. So if at any point you think it's too difficult, you have that support in place. All right? Are you ready to get started? Sounds good. All right, let's start with our first question. It's a math multiple choice question. Here we go. All right. Mr. Pasquale has a bag of beads. He gives Emily five beads. He gives Alexander eight more beads than Emily. 
he gives Nicholas four times as many beads as Alexander. How many beads does Nicholas have? Is it A, 32, B, 20, C, 52, or D, 160? Okay, so eight plus five is 13. 13 and four. Double 13, you get 26, and then double it again, it's 52. So what do you think the answer is? I think it's C, 52. Now how confident are you? Do you want to use one of your lifelines now, or do you feel like you know it? I think I'm pretty confident. You're pretty confident? Is that your final answer? Yes. And that's correct. C is the final answer. Nice job, Jackie. Mathematics Standards 40A3 has students solve multi-step word problems posed with whole numbers and having whole number answers using the four operations, including problems in which remainders must be interpreted. Students represent these problems using equations with a letter standing for the unknown quantity. The question assesses the reasonableness of the answers using mental computation and estimation strategies, including rounding. We're starting off the questions with a fourth grade standard to get the contestant comfortable. This question comes from the operations and algebraic thinking standard. Students have to solve multi-step word problems posed with whole numbers and having whole number answers using the four operations. Students must also assess the reasonableness of answers using mental computations and estimation strategies, including rounding. All right, Jackie, first question's down. You ready for the second question? We just did a math one. We're going to move to English language arts. All right, let's start with question two. I'm going to read a passage and then ask you a question with four choices. Are you ready? Kathy Jimson moved into our neighborhood in August. Right away, she started to change her front yard. She pulled out all the old vines and planted a simple garden that's easy to take care of. Its most striking feature is a trail of Arizona river rock. These silver stones brighten the yard and are a good contrast to the plants. She has planted slow-growing garden juniper among the rocks. Their gray-green needles provide an excellent contrast to the stones. The grass she chose, with its wonderful yellow spires, require little water. The yellow mums, which also use little water, are great accents to the darker shrubs. At both corners, she has planted bright red roses that need little care. All her shrubs are dwarf varieties that need little attention. In the center of the yard are a soft leaf yucca tree and a Japanese maple tree. The whole yard is surrounded by a border of Loriope flowers, which can survive on rainfall alone. And now the question. What is this passage mainly about? Is it about A, how to use river rock in a garden? B, educating readers about fall plants? C, describing a simple garden? Or D, fitting dwarf plants into a garden? Um, I think the answer is C or D. Um, can I use one of my lifelines? Absolutely. Which lifeline would you like to use? Um, I want to narrow it down to two, so can I use the 50-50? Okay, so 50-50. Computer, eliminate for me two of those choices. All right, the computer has eliminated B and D, so we are left with two choices. A, how to use river rock in a garden, or C, describing a simple garden? Well, I thought the answer was C or D, so I'm gonna go with C. Okay, is that your final answer? Yes. And that is correct. This English standard falls under reading for information. Here, students need to determine two or more main ideas of a text and explain how they are supported by the key details and the ability of summarizing the text. This standard is under the strand of key ideas and details that addresses the understanding of the main idea or gist of the larger concept, framework of a textbook chapter, an article, a paragraph, a sentence, or a passage that is a sophisticated reading task. Being able to draw conclusions, evaluate, and critically interpret articles or chapters is important for overall comprehension in college reading. 
All right, Jackie, you have the first two questions correct. We now go to our third question of this segment, and it's always our park interactive question. Are you ready for it to win yourself a homework pass? I'm ready. All right, let's get started with question three. As you can see on the iPad in front of you, there is a math interactive question. Please read the question aloud for us and then do your best to try to answer it. You've already used your 50-50 lifeline. You do have two other lifelines if you need it. Look at the coordinate grid below. The coordinates of point A are, well, the first point is X value. Sorry. No. The first, yep, X is the first. And the second point is Y. I know the first point value, the X value, is three. Then I think the Y value is seven. Um, and now point C? Coordinates of point C. Um, I think the Y is one and the X is five. All right, now, if this is your final answer, you hit submit. Is it your final answer? Yes. All right, submit it. And that is correct. Nice job, Jackie. This mathematics standard, 5G1, where students are able to use a pair of perpendicular number lines called axes to define a coordinate system. The intersection of the lines, the origin, arranged to coincide with the zero on each line and a given point in the plane located by using an ordered pair of numbers called its coordinates. This park-like question, which is interactive and students practice using Study Island, have students understand that the first number indicates how far to travel from the origin in the direction of one axis, and the second number indicates how far to travel in the direction of the second axis, with the convention that the two names of the two axes and the coordinates correspond. All right, Jackie, you've got yourself the homework pass. Now we're going for your class. I got to tell you, in the beginning, you said your favorite uh, subject was ELA reading, mm -hmm. but you are excellent on those math questions. Nice Thanks. job. You ready for question four? I am. All right, let's get started. Here we go. Back to an ELA question. I'm going to read you two passages. Then I'm going to ask you a question, multiple choice, and you'll choose which one is the correct answer. Here we go. Passage one. Guam is an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. People in Guam are outnumbered by the brown tree snake. Forty years ago, there were no brown tree snakes in Guam at all. Today, there are more than a million. Nobody knows where they came from or how to stop them from multiplying. Many kinds of rare birds are becoming extinct because of the brown tree snake. And passage two. Guam is an island in the Pacific Ocean. Today it belongs to the United States. It is not a state, though. It is a U.S. military base for the Air Force and Navy. It is the largest of the Marina Islands. Its total area is 209 square miles. The capital is Agana. The island was probably visited in 1521 by Magellan. It was later bought by Spain in 1565. In 1898, Spain gave the island to the U.S. It was part of a deal made between the countries after the Spanish-American War. Guam's people became U.S. citizens in 1950. And now the question. What comparison can be made after reading the two passages above? Is it A, they both talk about the political history of Guam, B, they both probably came from a science book. C, they are both about wildlife on, on Guam. Or D, they are both about the island of Guam. Well, both passages talked about the island of Guam, so I would say D, they're both about the island of Guam. You sound pretty confident. I am pretty confident. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you want to use a lifeline? No, I think I have the right answer. Is that going to be your final answer? Yep. D, that is correct. You got it. In language arts, many of the standards are interrelated based on the strands that bind the skills together. One question can span several standards in both reading for literature and reading for information. This particular question touches upon the strands of key ideas and details, craft and structure, and integration of knowledge and ideas. As explained in our last question, key ideas and details talks about the key concept being expressed and details, major and minor, that support these ideas. I gotta tell you, Jackie, I'm getting nervous. You're not nervous, but I'm getting nervous here. You're doing a great job. Thank you. You ready for another math question? Yep. All right, here we go. Another multiple choice. Question five. Here we go. All right. Miss Reynolds is starting a marching band at her school. She first does some research and finds the following data about the other local marching bands. Look at that table displayed and answer for me the following question. There are how many brass instrument players per percussion player? Is it A, two, B, three, C, five, or D, eight? Um, I'm not sure which operation to use. Um, can I use one of my lifelines? Yes, you can. Which lifeline do you want to use? You've already done the 50-50. Do you want to ask the audience or do you want to text a friend? Um, I'll ask the audience. Okay. Audience, it's your chance to get involved here. Jackie is not sure of the answer. How many brass instrument players are there per percussion player? You have 10 seconds to answer in. All right, let's see what the audience said. All right, 86% of the audience said the answer is B3. 14% thought the answer was A2. What do you think you want to do? Um, I'll go with B3. You're going to go with the audience B3? Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. And that is correct. <laughs> nice job, Jackie. In this mathematics question, students find whole number quotients of whole numbers with up to four digit dividends and two digit divisors using strategies based on place value, the properties of the operations, and or the relationship between the multiplication and division. In this mathematics standards 5 NBT6, students need to illustrate and explain the calculation by using equations, rectangular arrays, and or area models. All right, we're getting ready for question six. This is the end of the second round. If you get this one correct, you'll win a homework pass for your entire class. How are you feeling? Pretty good, I really want to win it. All right, at the end of our last one, we did an interactive math question. It's time for an interactive ELA one. Here we go, question six, let's do it. All right, you're gonna see up on the iPad an interact interactive passage. What I need you to do for me is read the passage and then determine which of the sentences highlighted in blue best supports that the villagers of Corfi value education. Take a minute and read it over. Hmm. So what do you think? Well, they asked for a new school, so that must mean that they value education, so I'm going to go with four. They requested a new school. All right. You seem pretty confident. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. And that is correct. You got a homework pass for everybody in your class. Nice job, Jackie. PARC is an online assessment in which students can engage with the assessment items using computer-based functions such as drag and drop, multiple select, text highlighting, and an equation builder. Also, the PARC assessment will include features that make the test more accessible for all students, including those with disabilities and English language learners. Okay, Matthew, this is getting exciting. Bring us to the next question. All right, Jackie, we get the first two rounds down. 
You got the homework pass for yourself, for the class. Now we play for Parker School. If you can get these last three questions right, and I'll tell you these last three, those are the most challenging ones. Are you ready? I think I'm ready. All right, here we go. Question seven, let's get started. This is a multiple choice math question. Three times Joyce's age, J, is less than her sister Robin's age, 15. Which of these choices could Joyce's age be? A, three, B, five, C, 22, or D, 47? Hmm, this is sort of tricky. I'm gonna try substituting each of the answers into the problem. Okay. So three times J must be less than 15. So three times three is nine, and nine is less than 15, so it must be A, three. How confident are you? I'm pretty confident in this. Really? Lifeline? I don't think I need one this time. Final answer? This is my final answer. You got it, that's correct. Nice job. While solving this problem, students show an understanding of solving an equation or inequality as a process of answering a question which values from a specific set, if any, to make the equation or inequality true. In this mathematics standard, students need to use substitution to determine whether a given number in a specified set makes an equation or inequality true. All right. Are you ready to go for another multiple choice question? Question number eight? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Question eight, let's do it. ELA question. I'm gonna read you a passage and then ask you a question. Last night, I had trouble falling asleep. After rolling around in the bed for over an hour, I finally gave up and went to the kitchen. A glass of warm milk should do the trick. I almost jumped when I saw the refrigerator in the darkness. The light from the street poured through the window. It cast a scary shadow on the refrigerator. A movement in the darkness caught my eye. Was there someone else in the kitchen with me? Which of these sentences from the passage helps the reader identify which point of view it is being told from? Is it A, a glass of warm milk should do the trick? B, a movement in the darkness caught my eye? C, the light from the street poured through my window, or D, it cast a scary shadow on the refrigerator. Hmm. Well, the story's being told in the first person, and a movement in the darkness caught my eye is in the first person, so I would say the answer is B. B? B. How confident? I am pretty very confident. Pretty very confident. Yes. Lifeline? All right. Final answer? Mm-hmm. And you are correct. It is B. Here again we see the Common Core State Standards strand of craft and structure where the author shows through the text his or her own specialized language and phrases that communicate specific meanings to ideas within that content realm. Identical terms used in different domains can convey completely different intentions. This particular question hits upon Reading for Literature 6, where the text describes how a narrator or speaker's point of view influences how events are described. You will see through all of these strands and standards that they relate and flow through all the key concepts in English language arts. All right, we're on our final question. I gotta tell you, I seem to be more nervous than you are. You're doing great. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm pretty confident. All right, it's gonna be our last question. And as always with our last question each segment, it's an interactive question, Park style. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Here we go, opportunity for all of Parker School to get a homework pass. Let's do it, question nine, here we go. All right, as you'll see on the iPad, it's a real world math problem. I want you to take a look at it and determine which of the equations, and it can be more than one, could lead to the correct solution of this real world math problem. Um, this is 
difficult. I don't, I really have no idea for this one. Well, good news, you still have a lifeline left. You wanna use it? Yep. All right, it's text a friend, and you could bring a friend up here. Who would you like to get up here? Um, Mackenzie. Mackenzie? All right, come on up here, Mackenzie. Your friend Jackie needs your help here with our final question, interactive math question. Take a look at this here and see if you can help her out. So it looks like you have to add all those together. So it would probably be 2.03. So probably this one and this one. Probably not the fifth one because that... Now why, wouldn't, why wouldn't it be the fifth one that says 2.03 also? Because one plus three tenths plus four tenths plus two tenths doesn't equal 2.03. All right. So, Jackie, you get to make the final decision here. How confident are you in Mackenzie's answer of the third and the fourth choice both being the correct answers? I'm pretty confident. She's pretty smart in math, so <laughs> I trust her. Okay. So, this is for the homework pass for all of Parker. Is this your final answer? Yes. All right, click the submit button. Let's find out. Yes. And it's correct. Congratulations. Got all nine questions correct. Nice job, Jackie. Thanks to all the kids for doing this. We are now going to go to Dr. Jonathan Landman, the Assistant Commissioner for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education for Teaching and Learning, and Chelmsford own Superintendent, Dr. Frank Tiano. Thank you. Thanks, Matthew. As you know, we're joined here by Dr. Jonathan Lehman. He is the Assistant Commissioner from, from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Uh, Dr. Lehman, thank you so much for joining us here on Ion Park. Thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, thrilled to be able to come out and just so glad that uh, we're working together, district and department together. Uh, it's great. It's a nice opportunity for all of our folks at home to hear a little bit more about Park. Yeah. But before we talk about Park, let's talk about you for a minute. Now, sure. as I mentioned, you're the Assistant Commissioner for Teaching and Learning yeah. at the department. If you could just tell us a little bit about your background and perhaps what your role specifically looks like. Sure. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, my uh, career has been uh, largely uh, out in the school districts. I spent about 10 years as a history and social studies teacher at Brookline High School and uh, have uh, since that time uh, worked as a high school principal, as an assistant superintendent in a couple of systems, as a superintendent, and uh, came to the department about a year and a half ago. Um, my uh, my portfolio is uh, is broadly titled uh, teaching and learning, mm -hmm. and uh, I've got responsibility uh, over the curriculum instruction unit of the department. And uh, over the last year, have uh, been responsible for the rollout of a large uh, initiative called Retail, which has been providing professional development to the field about uh, how to meet the needs of English mm -hmm. language learners. So that's uh, what I'm up to mostly, and I've been involved also with this park mm -hmm. uh, rollout process. That's a huge responsibility you have. Has the transition been smooth? It's terrific. I actually uh, love working at the department and feel like it's a really uh, great thing as a person with uh, you know 20 plus years of experience in districts to be bringing that experience to the department and that perspective to uh, mm -hmm. department work. And, yeah. and we're moving forward and as we mentioned before the show, I just appreciate the support that you and your colleagues have been providing for us here in the districts. I know it's not easy. Well, uh, we really appreciate the partnership and uh, being able to do things like this, uh, come, come out and speak uh, to the community about uh, what's going on in education. It's great. Right. So we're going to talk about Park for a minute. Now, Jonathan, we're lucky to be working here in Massachusetts where we have some of the best schools in the country. And so far, as an assessment tool, we've used the MCAS to help get us there. How is the Park going to continue that growth and take us deeper into our students' learning? So it's a great question. So I mean, I, one of the things that uh, uh, you know is a question that's out there in the community, in the, in the public, is what, what's in it for Massachusetts when we've had so so much success with MCAS, so much success with with our with our former standards. Um, so I guess the way to, to start this is to say that uh, in 2010, the Board of Ed adopted new curriculum frameworks in, in both language arts and math that incorporate the Common Core state standards. And um, this shift to uh, 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 the new standards means that no matter what we're going to have to evolve our assessments because we need to have assessments that are aligned to these to these new uh, frameworks that we've put in place. Um, and the park assessment is uh, potentially an opportunity to uh, enable us to assess some of the shifts that are uh, that are demanded in these new uh, these new 
frameworks um, in some really exciting and innovative ways. And for districts, it, you know, this is a shift. Again, we're yeah. moving forward. Now, Chelmsford, like other districts, have been looking at the park questions, and we've been looking at the website, and we've been looking at, it, at the navigation device. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit of difference between the two uh, types of questions? Uh, you mean between the park questions and the and the assessments and in, in, yes. uh, we ha, ha, MCAS and park. So um, uh, one huge uh, uh, thing that's been talked about quite a bit already mm -hmm. is that uh, MCAS has always been a paper and pencil assessment, mm -hmm. and with uh, the shift to park, uh, while there is going to be a paper and pencil version of park available, uh, at least until the point when we have uh, technological accessibility for for students around the state. Um, with the park, with the park assessment, we're moving. We have the, now this this uh, new online approach, um, and uh, the online approach, uh, for example, in mathematics, allows a broader array of question types, which allows us to explore um, uh, aspects of mathematics, uh, a variety of mathematic uh, thinking that was not uh, possible to explore uh, with the uh, with the old uh, uh, MCAS system. Sure. Um, and uh, uh, again, in, in language arts, allows us to uh, do more of that work, uh, connecting the text and uh, and evidence to uh, to uh, uh, to these responses. Um, so I think uh, those are probably the, the, the big the big shifts is around move, moving to technology and then being able mm -hmm. to uh, use item types which allow us to assess some of those those new skills. Nice. Yeah. And, and, and just so we're clear for the people watching, is is Park going to work in conjunction with MCAS or replace MCAS? So um, the the for the time being, what we're doing this year is a field test. And so this this first uh, uh, event that start actually starting up uh, now soon, in, very soon <laughs> in, in the coming week, um, uh, and it's going to be happening over the next several weeks in, in districts, um, is actually not an assessment of students. It's an assessment of the assessment itself, um, and the field test uh, that we're doing right now um, uh, is is a is a part of a random a random uh, trial that's be happening all over the country. Uh, over a million students are participating in the field test, and in Massachusetts, uh, we have about 80,000 students who are participating. And um, the students who are participating in the in the field test, um, uh, uh, districts were, were offered the opportunity. I don't know what, how Chelmsford chose to go go whether they, uh, but districts were offered the opportunity either to have students uh, uh, do the MCAS in the area that they're participating in the field test, or uh, as well as the f as well as the field test, or just to do an either or. So I'm not right. sure you, you, you could share with the community what, what choice uh, uh, Chelmsford made in that in that regard. Uh, but what we're doing with the field test right now, in no way, is intended to uh, replace MCAS. It's really an opportunity to take a close look at whether uh, uh, the park mm -hmm. assessment is is able to assess these new uh, skills mm -hmm. that are uh, demand demanded by the shifts in the standards effectively or not, and to see whether it is an assessment that mm -hmm. is uh, as rigorous or more rigorous than MCAS, and whether it is um, able to assess uh, with, with validity and reliability. Thank you for making that quite clear. It, and as you know, the implementation of this, it makes sense to do the field testing, not, not only for the validity of the testing, but also, too, for districts in terms of getting that technological yeah, component. And, and so as we're moving through, our, our tech department, along with our curriculum and assessment folks, are, are really interested to see how this plays out. I, that's very important. In fact, I, I, I really should have said more about that. This is not just a test of uh, an assessment of the, of the, uh, the assessment questions themselves. It's mm -hmm. really an assessment of how the technology works, it's an assessment of how the implementation uh, works out yeah. in the field. And by the way, let me just say, I mean, we are, this is a field test. We're expecting that there are going to be some glitches <laughs> and bumps along the way. This sure. is a huge undertaking. You know, uh, during this field test uh, uh, process, there's going to be, uh, again, over a million kids participating in a new assessment. And we know that, uh, you know, that's a very big, complex uh, uh, undertaking. The good news is, there really there there are no stakes associated with this whatsoever. It really right. is an opportunity to mm -hmm. to try this thing out in all in all of its uh, complexity. Yeah, and I keep reinforcing that. Important. It, I'm it, glad you do it. It's good. It's important. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but we appreciate the opportunity to yeah. uh, to test drive the test for for our kids and staff. We are uh, we're doing this show to reach out to our community I, again. When you hear park, there's a lot of things associated with it, and people. You, you know, we have so many acronyms anyway in education that we want to make sure that it's clear. Um, how is the DESE re reaching out to not only f uh, communities like Chelmsford but the entire 
Commonwealth in terms of uh, letting people know what Park's all about. So uh, we're really we're really uh, trying very hard to uh, get out there to answer people's questions and try and share good, clear information about what's going on because this is obviously an important transitional uh, moment. Um, although the decision hasn't been made, we're trying something out that has that is potentially very consequential for the state. And then there's also uh, uh, some materials again at the Park uh, site on the Department of Ed website. And we've also um, put together a couple of um, pages that um, share links to a variety of the other places where, uh, f where people can get information about, about PARC. So um, there's, a, there's a very extensive uh, PARC uh, uh, online site where people can get information about, uh, about uh, the, the new assessment. At, and uh, so the PARC online so, uh, resources is, is very expansive mm -hmm. um, and I think on the second page of these of these uh, resources we go back there because one of the most uh, uh, interesting sites to explore is one that I'm going to share a little bit of information for with you today it's the uh, sample uh, test item section I think a lot of parents will find that page on the park park page uh, very interesting so on this page um, the uh, the the Department of Ed park site that I mentioned the, mm -hmm. the link is here and I also want to mention something interesting here as well that the Department of Higher Education in Massachusetts also has a, w a web page that's focused on PARC. And that's very interesting because, you know, this, this shift to the new Common Core Standards and PARC is about um, shifting to college and career ready standards. Mm -hmm. And um, there's actually a very important uh, uh, piece of the puzzle we haven't actually talked about mm -hmm. yet. Sure. It has to do with higher education. Um, uh, with, I if we adopt PARC, um, the, the, the assessment that students will take in 11th grade, which is different from that MCAS, MCAS ends at 10th grade. Yes. Um, the assessment that students take in 11th grade will actually uh, uh, provide uh, a, 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 a evidence of whether or not a student has achieved college and career readiness um, through their high, high school education. I appreciate you sharing those resources with us and, and, and with the folks of, of Chelmsford. It's a lot of information out there and sometimes people don't know which questions to ask and, and, and how to access them. But they will be on our website and you'll be able to access them from uh, Chelmsford Public Schools website. Sure. So, so Jonathan, you have some questions uh, to share with us straight from Park? Straight from Park. All right. Okay. So let's take a look. All right. I think let's start with the language arts uh, assessment. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up uh, a particular uh, set, set of questions. This is, a, this is a set of questions that are available to uh, the public and I really encourage uh, uh, parents, students, mm -hmm. teachers, uh, mm -hmm. to to jump on in and take a look at this material. If you're just curious to see, uh, mm -hmm. you know what 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 this park assessment is going to look like. So, so you're not going to quiz me here. Right? Uh, no, and don't quiz me either. I'm I mean, because I'm going to show you this okay, stuff. This is not live. I, yeah, there we yeah. go. I, okay, we're just we're just sharing what's in here. So um, these are some uh, uh, sample from the uh, six to eight uh, grade span in English language arts. And um, this particular uh, item that we're going to take a look right set of items that we're going to take a look at right now. Um, uh, are, are, I think, really illustrative of, of how PARC is going to be different from MCAS, is the stuff we were talking about before. So um, what you have here is a set, a whole series of questions. It's part of, part of what's called a simulated research task um, that uh, it would be part of the uh, performance-based assessment in language arts, which uh, uh, takes place in March, mm -hmm. um, which followed later by a, a summative assessment the, in May. Um, and those two pieces together for, form the, the, uh, the, the end of year and the, and the performance-based assessment form this summative uh, piece of, of the park assessment system. Anyway, so um, what you have here is a, uh, the first of a series of resources about uh, Amelia Earhart. And you can see here, students can scroll down through the, through the uh, paragraphs of this, of this reading, and the paragraphs are numbered. And on the right-hand side is uh, something that's pr very familiar to us from standardized s assessments. It's a multiple choice question about uh, where the students are asked to uh, uh, show their, their, their comprehension of, of the story. Or excuse me, in this case, it's a, a, the bi a, bi a biographical piece about Amelia Earhart. Um, and what's interesting is, though, is that this, there's, for each uh, uh, piece of the, of the assessment, um, it, it's in this mode, after the multiple choice uh, question, there's a Part B question. And in the Part B question, and this is something that does now depart from the MCAS assessment, it asks, in which paragraph, which other paragraph in the article does a quotation from Earhart contribute to the reader's understanding of her character in similar ways to what was addressed in Part A? Mm -hmm. And what this is requiring the 
the student or the participant in the assessment to do is to demonstrate that they can draw evidence from the text to reinforce uh, the, 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 their, under, their, uh, their uh, uh, demonstration of their comprehension of what's going on in the text. Um, and uh, uh, I think that this is uh, uh, something that in, in the current MCAS assessment, um, the only questions which actually ask students to back up their, uh, their uh, answers with uh, uh, evidence from a text mm. is in the, is in the um, open, response open response items, um, not in the long composition items either. Uh, but now with this new assessment, um, we're able to dig much deeper to see whether students are able to, to, to show the relationship between their answers and evidence from, from what it, whatever it is that they're looking at. And that's going to be very, very important. So if we keep going now, I'm just going to keep moving through this. This is the second item. Um, this is one of these technology enhanced items, which are part of both the uh, a, a performance based section of the assessment and also mm -hmm. the end of year. Um, and here, um, we're still in the same reading. And look at the question on the right hand side. According to the biography of Amelia Earhart, which events had the most significant impact on Earhart's life? From the list of events, create a summary by dragging the four most significant events and dropping them in the boxes in chronological order. And here, a student, I'm just going to make it up, but I'm going to, you know, put some events, drag and drop some events down here. Um, and uh, here again, what, what, uh, what is somewhat different from a multiple choice kind of a, a, a assessment is that the students are actually uh, being asked to organize the information um, uh, using, using this technology enhanced system. Sure. In, in the current uh, MCAS assessment, to have a student uh, show you that they're able to organize information, you'd have to have them write. Right. So this is, again, is allowing you to, to assess um, in a very efficient um, and actually cost-effective way some of the things we haven't been able to get, get at to, through MCAS except through open response questions. So we still have a lot of writing in this assessment, but it allows us to get a deeper understanding of, of, of students' comprehension uh, and uh, use of the evidence piece um, through, the, through the technology. That's a nice um, feature. Yeah, um, if we keep moving now here, see we're on the next page. So now here's the, the second resource about Amelia Earhart. And, and here, um, interestingly, this is now taken from a website. And mm -hmm. one of the things that you're going to see in a minute, one of the things that I think is really exciting and interesting about the park assessment is it really allows us to, um, to assess how students are, are developing their comprehension skills around the whole range of 21st century media. So uh, unlike with the paper and pencil assessment like MCAS, uh, once we can get all students into a, uh, a, 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 a computer-based assessment like this, we'll be able, we'll be able to give students uh, uh, readings, um, audio clips, video, yeah. show them s pieces of a website, and really see whether students are able to navigate, make sense of all the different kinds of media which these days they need to be able to make sense of in order to, to uh, make sense in the world. And, it, and those type of types of skills are in the Common Core Standards as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so now this is this question is actually the same uh, uh, kind we've seen before. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to keep going. But maybe while I'm here, I'll show you something else. So one of the other nice features of of this assessment um, a, a system is that it also provides a range of um, of accommodations that kids can draw on that may make it easier for them to, to um, be successful. So for example, if a student has a uh, some kind of a visual impairment, mm -hmm. um, they can change the background color. Uh, so that maybe it's easier for them to read. You see, so maybe there, this helps them to be able to read uh, better. This is, and these, these are accommodations. That are, this, these are available, available to, to all, to all, all students. students. Um, nice. uh, take a look at another one. A, a student uh, can uh, who can add a magnifier. So if they're having trouble, you know, reading something, mm -hmm. or maybe this is better for those of us in the 50 right, upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can, they can drag the ma magnifier over and and you know and be, are able to see see better here. Um, so they have a chance to personalize it, yeah. s similar to how they would on their own device. Yeah, I'm just going to try and get rid of this, uh, the, uh, the magnifier so we can see. This is another way they can mask answers and uh, just uncover one at a time, which for some students can help them to, to focus and, and, um, and uh, uh, can help them to, be, can, to do better on the assessment. Um, there, are other, there are other interesting features like, the, like that, that uh, for example, this one over here allows students to, let me get rid of this first for a moment, to, um, to as, as they're eliminating uh, 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 answers, if they decide, well, you know, I know B is wrong, mm -hmm. they can they can uh, put an X 
uh, over B and say, wow. okay, I'm still trying to figure out whether it's A, C, or D, but I'm going to get B out of the way. So these are things that are available to everybody that help, help students to be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're very excited about um, that would really be a, a step forward with the park assessment is that for English language learners, they'll be able to um, uh, drag their mouse over any word and get a, get a definition. So for students who are, you know, so that the, if they're having, uh, you know, a challenge with a particular bit of vocabulary, it doesn't get away, uh, you know, from, from, from their being able to show us, broadly speaking, their comprehension. So, okay, so let me move, move forward here, keep showing, showing some more about this. So, um, uh, hold on a second. And these are test taking strategies that we've been using with students for a long time. You know, these are technologically based and, and, and that's, a, that's a shift that most districts are making anyway. There you go. And I think it's really, you know, it's, the reality is we need our students to uh, know how to use these technological skills uh, for the workplace, for yes. college. You know, this is, this is what they need to have. Uh, so it's a good thing that we're, we're, we're making the shift um, uh, uh, to having these things uh, be part of the assessment as well. Although it's certainly very important that if a student is going to be uh, asked to do an assessment like this that they've had opportunities in the classroom to yes. work with the te technology first. So we, it's really important that we find the funding for those districts and schools that haven't got that kind of access mm. to get to that point. And that's something we're working mm. on in the state right now. So um, uh, moving through this, which is trying to get to uh, one more piece of the puzzle here. So this is another, again, another uh, uh, situation where the students are, are, are going to be asked to uh, use evidence to demonstrate uh, to back up their, their point of view. So below are three claims that could be made based on this article. Um, uh, select the claim that's supported by the most evidence. So you, pick an, uh, you, you select a claim, and then you go down below, and then you have to pick the evidence that best supports that claim, uh, that, that quotes from the, from the story that best support that. Um, and now here, as we mentioned, there's, there, there's now varied sorts of sources of media. In this particular question, there's a video. That's great. The students are asked to watch a video, and again, then they're supposed to, from that video, they're supposed to demonstrate, you know, that here's the question. Uh, uh, in the video, Amelia Earhart, Life and Disappearance, the narrator mentions people who qualified Earhart's skills as adequate. What's the meaning of this phrase intended to suggest to the viewer of the video? They have to get, give their comprehension, and then, again, in part B, back it up. So, and then I want to just go to this last piece here. Forward through. So now, here's, here's, here's where Park um, departs in the most uh, significant and exciting way, I think, from what we've been doing uh, so far with our MCAS assessment. So um, uh, currently, um, uh, MCAS has open response questions every year, but only at fourth, seventh, and tenth grade do we have a long composition writing assessment. Right. The MCAS uh, has been wonderful. It's been first in class in the nation. But Park really does promise, and we'll have to see how it delivers, <laughs> but promises to go beyond that in this, in this area in particular. Every year, from third grade to 11th grade, students will be asked to write a significant piece of writing as part of the assessment, which, which will encourage around the state, encourage us to put more attention and focus onto this work of teaching students how to mm -hmm. communicate in writing. And these assessments, these assessment questions, are taking us to the next level. In that, well, so, so let me just back up for you for a second. So when the, when the, when the, when the, um, when the state was developing, or oh, excuse me, when the, 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 the Common Core assessment uh, uh, frameworks were being developed, mm -hmm. um, uh, a lot of the effort that went into the, uh, the pre-work before the, 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 the standards were developed had to do with going on interviewing uh, professors of, uh, uh, freshman English and freshman history and science to see if, at the college level what did professors say that their students need to know and be able to do to be successful. And what we heard over and over and over again in that interviewing process was that students needed to be able to back up their claims with evidence. They needed to be able to express their ideas clearly and they needed to be able to back up their claims. Well, in this new uh, set of writing uh, uh, assessments, what we're asking students to do is to draw from multiple sources, back up their claims with evidence, and write about it. So look at this, look at this assessment question here. You've read a website entry and an article and watched a video, so three different resources, mm -hmm. describing Amelia Earhart. All three include information that supports the claim that Earhart was a brave, courageous person. The three titles are, and then they're there, and those you can see the students can toggle back and read, click onto any of the, uh, you know, whichever, whichever the pieces they need to go to. 
uh, as, they're, as they're writing their piece. Mm -hmm. Consider the argument each author uses to demonstrate Earhart's bravery. Write an essay that analyzes the strength of the arguments related to Earhart's bravery in at least two of the three supporting materials. Remember to use textual evidence to support your ideas. So here students mm -hmm. are being asked to synthesize what they've learned from multiple sources and then to make an argument based I in evidence. Right. And that, if we can get our students to the point where they are, they're getting into the habit of doing that on a regular basis, we're really going to be preparing them for success later on. And so. to be able to have them do it in a time efficient manner as well. It's not an all day process, you know, like the great form, you know, writing prompt or the grade 10 writing prompt. And to be able to think critically and to be able to provide the evidence in a timely and concise fashion as that's well. That's right, that's right. So actually we, that's an important uh, distinction also between uh, uh, MCAS and PARC. Um, MCAS uh, is, is uh, uh, an untimed assessment. Mm -hmm. um, PARC, uh, each, each, uh, there, there's actually more sessions, but the sessions in PARC are timed. Um, and there's a specific amount of time that's projected that most kids are going to take to do the assessment and the maximum allowable time is 50% more than that. And that's because right. the research has shown that for the vast majority of students, if you add that 50%, uh, anything beyond that, they're not really going to do any better on, on sure. the assessment. For students who have an IEP, which, which specifically allows them an untimed amount of time, they'll have that time still. But for most students, they'll be a, you're, you're right, that's, that's, that's a really yeah. important point. They're, it's going to be a more time delimited thing. So should we move on to the math assessment? Absolutely. Great. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to show uh, math at a couple different grade levels. So let's start with right here. Um, with uh, a math question from, I believe this is a fourth grade math question, if I, re if I recall correctly. Um, and uh, so we were talking earlier about, about how there's a broader variety of uh, question types in the math assessment. Um, this is one of the new assessment uh, options that was not available on MCAS, which is, just had multiple choice, uh, short and long. Uh, long, uh, short, uh, short and open response questions. Here's a, here's a, it's a this is a, uh, a, a question where actually the students are, are able to be a little bit more constructivist in their response. If you think about it, when you do a multiple choice question, you're giving students four options, they're picking one. Here's one where you're saying to the students, construct a response. So look at this. For a school trip, 72 students will be traveling in nine vans. Each van will hold an equal number of students. The equation shows a way to determine the number of students that will be in each van. 72 divided by nine equals. The given equation can be rewritten using a different operation. Use the drop-down menus to select the operation and the numbers to complete the equation. So take a look. So here we go. All right, now we're going to go, uh, I see 72 is over here on the right-hand side, right? So I'm going to go over on the left and I'm going to choose here. I'm going to choose 9, and I'm going to choose times, and then my question mark equals 72. So here I, I built a response. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's allowing us to see a little bit more what students can construct on their own, although we still are giving them scaffolds to do that. Right. Um, here's a question where students will have scrap paper. Here's a, student where student, a question where the student's, student just needs to uh, uh, figure it out on their own and then write, type in their answer. Uh, Patricia needs to read for 120 minutes each week. She reads so many minutes Monday, so many minutes Tuesday, so many minutes Thursday. How many more minutes does she need to read this week? Student needs to do a little, uh, little arithmetic problem there. Um, uh, here's, here's kind of an interesting uh, piece. One of the things that uh, one of the test developers in Massachusetts uh, who's focused on math was sharing with me, um, this, is a, this is a question which allows students to do some graphing. <laughs> and one of the things she shared with me is in the current MCAS assessment, whenever we want to have students graph, it has to be done by hand right. in open response question. So we're therefore very limited in the number of graphing uh, uh, questions that we give to students because we're worried that it may be hard to read their handwriting, hard to figure out what, what they really understood and didn't understand. By contrast, with this, uh, with this computer-based assessment, we can probe in a variety of areas. Graphing is one. If you look up here, there's some others as well. We've got a ruler that you, the students can bring on board, a protractor, that's great. Um, calculator, and some questions will uh, later on when kids get more older, older and more sophisticated, they'll have a graphing calculator. Um, <coughs> other kinds of tools that you can bring on for specific questions, which enable uh, uh, the assessors to, to look at a broader and some more complex array of students' math, mathematical understanding. So this one is a, about a tiling. An art teacher will tile a section of the wall with painted tiles made by students in three art classes. Class A made 18, B made 14, C made 16. What's the total number of tiles? Again, arithmetic. But now, 
Now we're going on to a, a different kind of question, this graphing question. The grid shows how much wall space the art teacher can use. So actually the answer above was 48. That's sure. So use the grid to create a rectangular array showing how the art teacher might arrange the tiles on the wall. So here uh, a student has to create a rectangular array, but there are multiple right. potentially correct responses. And again, if you're in a multiple choice situation, you can't give kids the opportunity to show that flexible thinking. Mm -hmm. Here you can. One of the questions that's actually not in this sample, but I know that is included in the, this uh, new assessment uh, method, is a, is, a, is, a, is a model where students can, can choose all that apply, all the answers that might be correct. And again, if we want students to be learning a more flexible approach to mathematical problem solving, where maybe there are different ways to get at an answer, right. giving the students the chance to, to choose all that apply allows you to see whether they're able to find those various different uh, pathways to a response. So here, student would create a grid. I'm not going to finish it, but you see how it works. Sure. Um, and uh, when they've got their grid correct, you know, completed, they move on. And these are scored yeah. electronically? These are scored electronically, right. yes. Um, uh, so here, Andy created a, rec this is the la third part here, and then we'll talk a little bit about how these build. Andy created a rectangular array showing he would place 56 small tiles on the wall. He placed seven tiles in each row. He wrote a multiplication equation using the question mark symbol to stand for the number of rows he used. And here the students would build an equation using these various uh, buttons and the numbers down here and actually would type out an equation. And again, here's a constructivist construct, question yeah. which allows the student to create their, their, uh, their answer, um, uh, but it's something that can be scored efficiently so we can go further in terms of our probing. Yeah. So um, I think maybe I'll... Uh, move forward from here to the, uh, maybe go back here for a moment. I want to show also something in the six to eight math item set. So I think it's pretty interesting. So this is now a middle school, I think a seventh grade uh, question, question set. Um, and we saw one like this. Again, this is again creating an equation using these drop downs. So we'll just move right past this one. I want to get you to a different um, piece here. So this is the one I wanted to show because I think this also g g illustrates something more. So this is a, a question about scientists uh, sending a rover to the moon. Their plan is to study a rectangular area of the moon by placing a grid over the map. On the grid, w one unit represents one kilometer. The, the rover will land at 3.51. Uh, so we start and we start plotting our graph. And I'm not going to I'm not going to go through this whole process, but it's 3.51 and 3.54, and then we we uh, keep going and ultimately, I don't, I'm making it up now, but you, you, we, the students, uh, the, the participants in the test will create a rectangle. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, look at what happens as we go on further down. Um, first they have to find the, the fourth vertex in the rectangle. Um, next they're asked to uh, uh, talk about the horizontal and vertical length of the rectangle. And then they're asked to find, this, is, this was all, the, the graph they saw was in kilometers. The final question is, find the area of the moon exploration area in square meters. Wow. So what's happening here is, through a series of questions, um, the, the, uh, the assessment is looking to see whether in a real world situation, the students can perform a variety of, of operations. And at first they're, they're plotting, then they're you know, calculating length, then they're, they're converting from kilometers to meters, and they're, they're, uh, they're representing the area. And they're allowing, this is allowing, without even getting to an open response kind of item, allowing uh, the, the assessment to probe deeply into whether, how flexibly students can use various mathematical algorithms and tools that they've learned. Jonathan, it, yeah. it, it's absolutely amazing, uh, you know, the depth that we can go with our students in terms of their assessment, you know, that we couldn't previously. And you're obviously passionate about this. I am. It's and, exciting. And, and, and just to see that, I, yeah. I've, I've seen these questions and I've seen these types before, but to have them explained so uh, concisely and be able to demonstrate it live, I, I know that our teachers, our parents, and we're going to encourage our kids to watch this as well. Great. To, to be able to see this and really yeah. kind of capture you know, what Park's all about. It, it's, um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate here in Chelmsford that you decided to join us. Oh, and thank you so much for giving us a chance to show, show folks what, uh, what this is about. Um, and uh, uh, it's going to be a, a really important process over the next year, year and a half, for us to evaluate uh, whether this promise of PARC uh, 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 is realized. And if it is, um, 
uh, I think this is going to really, uh, you know, uh, enable us to move Massachusetts to uh, the next level of excellence, which I think is a very exciting prospect. And I really, again, thank you so much for uh, for sharing the communication with the community. It's it's uh, tremendously uh, exciting to the, that people get to get to hear about what's going on. Absolutely, my pleasure. Come back and see us anytime. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Look forward to it. Thank you.